I have to admit, figuring out this question is like reading a map in a foreign language. You might end up at a treasure, or you might accidentally discover Atlantis. But knowing the probabilities of success, I would like to stay positive and wish you good luck on this particular journey. You are presented with the pyramid. Each cell in the pyramid has numbers inside. The top cell has number 125. The middle row has numbers 144 and 25. And the bottom row has numbers 196, 16, 4, and then comes the missing number, which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 1. Choice B, 9. Choice C, 25. And last but not least, choice D, 49. I hope now you know what I'm talking about. But don't worry. Don't feel stuck. Whether you're pro or newcomer, I trust that you can conquer this challenge. Remember, time is your friend, and a little outside of the box thinking goes a long way. You've got this. Take your time, get creative, and let's crack this puzzle together. Are you ready? Let's navigate the complexities of this challenge together and exchange solutions in the end. Your insights could be the key to unlocking this mystery. And as usual, if your solution is different, please make sure to post it in comments. As you might be well aware, to solve these types of challenges, you need to understand the pattern. And the pattern here is rather simple, but only once you know it. Calculations start at the top. To calculate the lower numbers, digits from the top number broken into 2 plus 1 and then squared. Let's look at the example. For example, 125 is broken into 12 and 5. 12 squared is 144, and 5 squared is 25. That's how we got to the numbers in the middle row. Let's do the same trick with the left section of the bottom row. 14 squared is 196, and 4 squared is 16. As you can see, the bottom row right section is calculated as 2 squared, which equals 4, and 5 squares, which equals 25. So the correct answer here is choice C, 25. Admit it or not, but wrapping your head around this particular question is as tricky as explaining puns and jokes to a computer. The laughter might be artificial, but it's still worth a bite. On the other thought, nowadays with ChatGPT, I'm not so sure who would be laughing at home. You're presented with 3x3 three three matrix. Each cell in the matrix has number inside. In the left column, the numbers are 7, 42, and 40. In the right column, the numbers are 22, 28, and 33. The middle column has number 15 on the top and 37 at the bottom. And you need to calculate the number in the center of the matrix. Your choices for the answers are A, 39, B, 41, C, 43, and last but not least, choice D, 47. Feeling a bit stuck? Well, you're not alone. I feel exactly the same way. But I am a firm believer that you've got this. Whether you're a seasoned problem solver or just starting out, I know that you can do this. Take a deep breath, approach it with creativity, and let's navigate through this challenge together. Your breakthrough is closer than you think. Are you ready? Or at least excited for the mental workout? Let's tackle this puzzle and explore the complexities together. And don't forget to share your brilliance in comments. Your solution might be just the breakthrough we need. To solve this problem, we need to understand the pattern. And to understand the pattern, we need to understand the calculations flow. And calculations start in the upper left corner and go around clockwise and end in the center of the square. Number in the position 1 is given. Then calculations go to the number 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and ends in the position 9. And then the pattern here is that the next number is calculated by adding the decrement to the previous number, which is decreased by 1 with each step in the calculations. Let's look at the example. The first number in the upper left corner is given, which is 7. The first decrement number is 8. 7 plus 8 equals 15. The next number is calculated as 15 plus 7, which is 8 minus 1, decrement decreased by 1, and equals to 22. 22 plus 6 equals 28. 28 plus 5 equals 33. 33 plus 4 equals 37. 37 plus 3 equals 40. 40 plus 2 equals 42. 
so the missing number is calculated as 42 plus 1 and equals 43. So the correct answer here is choice C, 43. When I looked at this question, I realized that deciphering it is like teaching fish to ride a bicycle. Solving this challenge seems improbable, but with enough patience and creativity, who knows what might happen. You're presented with the circle, which is broken down into eight sections. Each section has a number inside. Starting from 11 o'clock, counterclockwise, the numbers are 72, 52, 43, 23, 49, 25, 64, and then comes the missing number, which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 16. Choice C, 48. And last but not least, choice D, 72. Are you feeling a bit stuck? I have full confidence that you've got this. Whether you're a seasoned problem solver or just starting out, I know that you can do it. Take a deep breath, approach it with creativity, and let's navigate through this challenge together. Your breakthrough is much closer than you think. Are you ready? Well, ready or not, it's time to solve this mystery. Let's dive into solving this question together. And make sure to contribute your own version of the solution in comments. Your unique insights might be just what we need to conquer this mystery. To solve this challenge, let's draw a vertical line in the middle of the circle. You have numbers on the left, 72, 52, 43, and 23. And as you might have guessed, numbers on the left are the input numbers to calculate numbers in the section across on the right side. And numbers on the right are calculated as a first digit in the power of the second digit. Let's look at the example. The number on the left is 72. Number in the opposite section right across is 49. 7 in the power of 2 is 49. This is how 49 was calculated. Let's look at the other numbers. 5 in the power of 2 is 25. 4 in the power of 3 is 64. Then to calculate the missing number, we need to take 2 in the power of 3, which would be equal to 8. So the correct answer here is choice A, 8. And now it's time for you to seize the spotlight. You need to tackle this question solo and showcase your brilliance. In this question, you need to identify all terms related to data analytics. The words are pivot, CVS, range, query, pilot, duplicate, and pylon. Once you've figured out all relevant words, make sure to share your answer in comments. I have full confidence that you can do it and excited to hear your thoughts so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for jumping in and happy solving. Here's the problem from the recent test, but I have to warn you, solving this problem is as challenging as deciding what to watch on the streaming service with endless options. Options paralysis, as I call it. A bit overwhelming, and you might end up re-watching your favorite sitcom for the hundredth time. You are presented with two unusually looking shapes. Both shapes have large numbers inside and four numbers in the corners. For the first shape, the inside number is 1. Then the numbers go as 3, 8, 18, and 38. For the second shape, the inside number is 3. Then numbers go as 5, 12, 26, and then comes the missing number, which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 54. Choice B, 56. Choice C, 58. And choice D, 62. Feeling a bit perplexed with so many choices? It's all good. Whether you're a regular puzzle master or dropping by on this channel occasionally, I am confident in your abilities. You're on the right track. Just give yourself enough time to solve this puzzle. Are you ready with your solution? Join the journey as we navigate through complexities. Your solutions are invaluable, so don't forget to drop your insights in the comments. They could be the missing piece we're looking for and will help us all learn. As usual, to solve this challenge, we need to understand the pattern. And the pattern here is that numbers are calculated similar to sequence, with the number in the middle being the starting point. The next number is calculated as previous number plus previous number again plus 2. Or you can say next number is previous number multiplied by 2 plus 2. Let's look at the examples. For the first shape, the starting number is 1. I called it inside number in my description when I presented you the question. 
then the calculations navigate to the upper left corner. 1 plus 2 equals 3. Then the next number is calculated as 3 plus 3 plus 2 equals 8, or 3 multiplied by 2 plus 2 also equals 8. As we move forward, 8 multiplied by 2 plus 2 equals 18, and 18 multiplied by 2 plus 2 equals 38. This is how we end up with the number 38 in the bottom left corner. Let's look at the second shape. In the second shape, the starting number is 3. 3 plus 2 equals 5. 5 plus 5 plus 2 equals 12. 12 plus 12 plus 2 equals 26. So the missing number in the bottom left corner of the second shape is calculated as 26 plus 26 plus 2 equals 54. So the correct answer here is choice A, 54. <sighs> Admit it or not, but deciphering this question is like teaching a penguin to fly. A real flap, but once you soar through, it's a flight of an accomplishment. I wonder if this questions are secretly evaluating our ability to navigate unconventional situations. You're presented with the circle, which contains letters inside. Three letters are missing. You need to build English business word by selecting three possible letters. For choice A, the letters are a, Y, and Y. For choice B, the letters are A, E, Y. For choice C, the letters are E, T, O. And for choice D, the letters are A, A, and Y. Feeling challenged? It's okay, you are not alone. I feel the same way. Whether you're a seasoned solver or casual questions explorer, I have faith in your problem-solving abilities. Give it the time it deserves, think outside the box, and watch the pieces fall into place. I have full confidence that you've got what it takes. Are you ready with your solution? Still not ready? Let me give you a hint. This word represents a comprehensive plan that outlines organizations' long-term goals and objectives, along with actions and tactics required to achieve them. I am pretty sure you've got this now. The word is strategy. Strategy involves making decisions how to allocate resources, such as people, capital, and time, to gain a competitive advantage in the market. So the missing letters are A, E, and Y, and the correct choice here is B. Solving this question is not exactly obvious. It reminds me playing hide-and-seek with your house keys, right before real estate showing. It's frustrating, it involves retracing your steps, and the solution is often the last place you look. In this question, you need to calculate total realtor's compensation. For each property realtor sells, she gets 2.5% of the selling price. If she sells more than two properties in two months, she also gets a bonus of 10%. In the last two months, realtor sold three properties. One house for $110,000, second house for $170,000, and a condominium sold for $75,000. You need to calculate and select Realtor's compensation for the last two months out of four possible choices. Choice A, $4,562.50. Choice B, $4,762.50. Choice C, $7,562.50. And last but not least, choice D, $9,762.50. Feeling a bit challenged? Make sure to give yourself enough time and solution will come your way. Are you ready? Let's look at four steps that will lead us to the final solution. In step number one, we are going to determine the commission for each property by finding 2.5% of the selling price. In step two, we'll add up individual commissions for all the properties to find the total commissions earned. In step three, we will determine if Realtor qualifies for the bonus and we'll calculate 10% of total commission. And finally, in step 4, we'll add up commissions and the bonus, if applicable, and we'll calculate the total compensation. Let's start with the step 1. We know that Realtor gets 2.5%, or in decimal, 0 0.025 of the selling price for each property. So for house 1, the commission will be 110 multiplied by 0 0.025, and it would be equal to $1,750. For house 2, commission can be calculated as $170,000 multiplied by 0 0.025 and the end result would be equal for $1,250. dollars 
and for the condo minimum, the commission can be calculated as $75,000 multiplied by 0 0.025, and it would be equal $1,875. In step two, we add the three values we just calculated, and the sum of the calculation will be $8,875. In step three, we will determine if Realtor qualifies for the bonus. Since she sold more than two properties, she gets a 10% bonus on top of her total commission. Bonus can be calculated as 0 0.10 multiplied by 8875 and the end result of this would be $887.50. And finally, in step 4, we can calculate total compensation. 8875 plus 887.50 equals $9,762.50. So the correct answer here is choice D, $9,762.50. It's time for you to challenge your brain and show off your skills. I have a problem for you to solve. <laughs> Solving this particular question reminded me playing hide and seek with my house keys before the house showing. It was frustrating, it involved retracing your steps, and the solution was often in the last place you look. You need to calculate total realtor's compensation. For each property realtor sells, she gets 2.5% of the selling price. If she sells more than two properties in two months, she also gets a bonus of 10%. In the last two months, she sold three properties. House 1 was sold at $110,000. House 2 was sold for $170,000. And then the condo minimum, which was sold for $75,000. You need to calculate and select a realtor's compensation out of four possible choices. Choice A, $4,562.50. Choice B, $4,762.50. Choice C, $7,562.50. And last but not least, choice D, $9,762.50. Use your brain power to crack this challenge solo, and once ready, make sure to post your answer in comments for my feedback. Thanks for participating, and good luck solving it. It's hard to deny, but solving Bitcoin volatility problem is like telling a weather forecast to a goldfish. One day it's sunny, the next day it's stormy, and you hope they swim through the waves without getting too seasick. With that in mind, here's the problem for you to solve. All Coined Capital Inc. incurred a loss of 20% by selling Bitcoin at $40,000. To get to a 20% profit instead, at what price should they sell the cryptocurrency? and you're presented with four possible choices. Choice A, $42,000. Choice B, $48,000. Choice C, $50,000. And last but not least, choice D, $60,000. Feel like you need a boost here? Well, you are not alone. I feel exactly the same way. Whether you're a problem-solving pro or just exploring, I believe in your skills. Take your time, think creatively, and let's unravel this puzzle together. Your solution is just around the corner. Do you have your answer ready? Well, ready or not, here comes the solution. Let's dive into solving this question together. Contribute your own version of the solution in comments. Your unique insight might be just what we need to conquer this mystery. The answer here is absolutely not obvious, but we will solve this challenge in two steps. In step 1, we'll calculate original Bitcoin purchase price. And then in the step 2, we'll calculate the price with 20% profit. We'll define a variable X for original selling price. Based on this, we can build a formula. 0 0.8 multiplied by X equals $40,000. We can build this formula based on the fact that Altcoin Inc. sold Bitcoin at 20% loss. It's time to calculate X. X equals $40,000 divided by 0 0.8, and the end result of this is $50,000. This is the original selling price. Now it's time to define a 20% profit price. $50,000 multiplied by 1.2 equals $60,000. So the correct answer here is choice D, $60,000. Did answer surprise you? Please share your thoughts, ideas, and suggestions in comments. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and to pass any test. If the content of this video was helpful, please make sure to click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video 
and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this, and when you tell us, we will deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description and comments of this video. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials related to this topic. I really appreciate your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.